Welcome to Chris Cast, Episode 3, Season 2. Today's episode is, um, the topic is shame, fear, and authority are no longer good points of pain or points of leverage to make, th- make people do what you want them to do. It's no longer a way of convincing people to comply with orders. I will go into details about that. I will tell you why I think it is. As all of my podcasts are, none of it is based at all um, in a rigorous academy. It's all my hopes, dreams, opinions, and thoughts. So when we get back from the break and a little bit of advertisement, uh, we will talk about the subject of how shame, fear, and a position of authority are no longer good enough leverage points, points of pain tools, uh, command and control tools that will make a a public, a people, uh, a culture, a country, um, do what you ask of them, do what you command of them, and why. Talk to you right after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, this these thoughts are really rare, uh, really raw. So um, again, this is Chris Abraham, season two, episode three of Chris Cast, and I am going to think these things through real time. I don't have a notepad in front of me except for this one, a little moleskin uh, pad, and all it has are the three words: shame, fear, authority. I thought of these, first this uh, episode was going to be about shame, which is to say um, most of what the people of America, I I only have an American experience, honestly I only have a Washington uh, DC, mid-Atlantic experience, I live in Virginia, and I know that from my experience just from NPR and television and radio and podcasts and alerts and newspapers and so forth, that uh, during our time of coronavirus, one of the only plans that anybody has is to use shame and fear to combat coronavirus and make people comply with regards to mandates. And the mandates are all based on authority. The authority of being the head of the CDC, the authority of being, um, of being the head of, of infectious disease of the United States, the authority of being surgeon general, the authority of being a doctor, the authority of being an academic, the authority of being a PhD or an MD or an Esquire, the authority of being the official organ of your state, local, or federal government. Um, ironically, that authority, um, for the for reasons I will talk about later, does not and no longer and hasn't for the last four years included um, the uh, White House or the executive um, the executive. Um, you know, the executive, uh, um, of the government because, you know, Trump's a moron. And the fact that Trump is in office is probably going to come up, uh, as to, uh, you know, during this episode, we'll see. Like I said, I'm, I'm sort of running raw on this. I do not have a lot of ideas in terms of what I've written down anywhere. So shame is being used. Uh, to shame you 
because in a very old church sort of way, which is um, if you don't wear a mask, you are a sinner. If you if you don't uh, if you go out with your friends, you are a sinner. If you um, hang out in groups, you're a sinner. If you secretly rendezvous with your lover, you are a sinner. These are not religious sins at all. In fact, um, one of the points of shame is thou thou shalt not congregate at church and thou shalt not sing loudly to the Lord. Um, But they are using the language of the church. They are using shame, fear, and authority to control and manipulate at least people in the mid-Atlantic. Not so much in Virginia, which kind of is the FU state, but definitely in Maryland and D.C., uh, there's extreme levels of public compliance. Um, When I say public compliance, you might have listened to a recent episode I wrote, or I, I, I shared with you, uh, about the extreme levels of of um, hypocrisy, and and listen, I didn't even think I don't you know nobody thinks about other people, except ever since Trump, and ever since the Me Too movement, and ever since Black Lives Matter, people who I've been on social media with since two thousand seven, um, who haven't anything but a a, a, a narcissistic bone in their body or just a normal like family friends you know kind of world view all of a sudden start preaching man preaching um men who who in at no point suggested at any point that they were um even allies of anybody started coming out and, uh, and, and protesting, uh, protesting too much. Hey, Google, what is the Shakespearean quote, thou doth protest too much? According to Wikipedia, the lady doth protest too much, methinks, is a line from the play Hamlet by William Shakespeare. It is spoken by Queen Gertrude in response to the insincere overacting of a character in the play within a play created by Prince Hamlet to prove his uncle's guilt in the murder of his father, the King of Denmark. Wow, that's perfect. That is so good. Uh, uh, Yes, overacting. Wow, that's a word that I hadn't even thought about. There has been an extreme amount of overacting um, in support of 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 shame, fear, and authority. <clears throat> there there must be a lot of people I know because people are getting sick, physically sick over climate change, physically sick over uh, white supremacy, physically sick over their perception that Donald Trump is in fact Pol Pot, plus Hitler, plus Stalin, plus um, uh, Mao Zedong. Uh, However, I I think that there's a lot of virtue signaling going on. And I believe that the virtue signaling is a manifestation, an essential manifestation of the game of not me, right? Uh, It's a hot potato game where the quicker you can get someone off your tail uh, through through committing uh, in in very much uh, an inquisition sort of way, I deny Satan. I deny Satan and accept the church. I am not Jewish. I am not Muslim. I am not Protestant. I am Catholic. I love Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. I love God. God is my Lord. I love Mary. Mary is my Lord. I love the Holy Spirit. I accept the Holy Spirit in my heart. Um, Except that playbook is being used uh, to combat climate change, to combat coronavirus, and to manipulate you. Now, young people are easy to manipulate with shame, fear, and authority, especially smart young people, because parents have been humiliating their children into high performance uh, in school 
uh, high grades, high performance, excellent university, et cetera, et cetera, humiliating them uh, as long as um, as long as college has been an entryway to uh, to climbing climbing the the ladder of accomplishment in the world. It's the uh, getting into the best college possible is the best way from um, an immigrant class person to uh, achieve all that is holy, which is a, uh, a position as a doctor or a lawyer or an Indian chief. So, ooh, is that racist? Yikes, I'm sorry. I feel shame, fear, and I bow to the authority of the politically correct police. On that note, let me collect my thoughts and I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Season 2, Episode 3 of Chris Cast. I was just thinking about shame, fear, and authority. Those three uh, leverages, those three um, leverages that are used uh, on the fulcrum of society, against the fulcrum of society and culture, in order to make things happen, make things move, and in order to organize people uh, for or against something, right? Um it's not necessarily clear what it is for or against. Um, in order to maintain moral high ground, it's very incredibly important to always make sure that when you're using shame, fear, and authority, that you make it all about the best interest of the individual and the community and the citizenry and the country, the best interest of, um, and this can be civil rights. This can be, f and it's always, almost always for the, for the, for the mothers and children. It's for the mothers and children. Um, and <clears throat> my premise today is that as we move forward in t time, uh, shame is certainly going to stop working. Uh, shame uh, I remember shame. I grew up Catholic. I know what shame is. And I knew that at some point uh, it was deeply shameful if, uh, if, if someone found out that you, that you had to go bankrupt. Ooh. It was really shameful if someone found out that you were gay. Ooh. It was really shameful if someone found out that you were barren or that you 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 couldn't make babies. Ooh. It was really, really shameful if uh, you or your family had ever been arrested or gone to jail. Ooh. It's really shameful if you are poor or if you uh, ha don't go to church or um, any of these things. Oh, my God. It's, uh, it's shameful if you um, are not manly or feminine. It's super shameful if you are a woman uh, older than 25 and unmarried. I mean, all these social construct and marais have always been based on shame, shame, shame. Um, shame can be mixed in with a little fear, right? Oh, you are... Uh, you are 26 and unmarried. You were never going to have a husband or, Ooh, you didn't, you didn't go to college. You're never going to uh, be successful or so many things. The shames are, the shames are attributed to disappointment, um, uh, being banished in many cases. I, I can't tell you how many people banished me for just not accepting in my heart that Trump was literally Hitler and was literally going to kill all the Jews and was literally going to kill all the gays and was literally going to kill all the children and was going to literally kill all the black people. 
Um, I didn't believe any of that. <clears throat> that was all projection, I guess. I don't know, but um, and as and shame really only works if there's no checks and balances. If you can't find out easily um, that in fact uh, it's it's shame is a manipul uh, a tool of manipulation and control. It's a tool of manipula manipulation, command and control. And uh, if you have the internet and you realize that uh, it's really easy to deal with the fact that you've had a bankruptcy or that you're poor or that you've lost your home or that you're never going to get married or you don't even want kids. The most beautiful thing about the internet that I think it is, is that birds of a feather flock together. You know, you can't be shamed now for being gay. You can't be shamed now for being trans. You can't be shamed now for having a divorce or for not loving your wife or husband or spouse. You can't be even shamed these days for cheating. You can't even use uh, cheating on your spouse as good spycraft leverage anymore. Because, I mean, uh, in a modern world, a lot of people have understood that um, <clears throat> that marriage is is a very complicated thing and it's a partnership between two people and 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 as we enter into a future where uh polyamory and uh and thruples and and as this corruption of of shame and fear and authority start to uh fall asunder we will more and more create things that are better bespoken are better bespoke to us, better customized to the cut of our jib. And, uh, hey, Google, what does the cut of my jib mean? Here's the definition of the cut of someone's jib, someone's appearance or demeanor. Wow, I know words. Anyway, um... And it's going to, and that's the problem with the internet. That's the reason why everybody hates the internet so much, because it's extremely empowering. I mean, look how desperately uh, the ruling class of authority, um, the authority, I was listening to NPR this morning, which was the impetus of, um, of, of recording this. Uh, I'll talk about it right after the break. Thanks for, thanks for being here. I'll talk to you in a second. freaking hates the internet you want to know why because um authority doesn't like to be questioned uh every single every single i listen to npr religiously <clears throat> but it's a religion that i no longer respect uh, it's a religion that I enjoy. It's a familiar religion. It relaxes me. It's like when I started going back to Episcopal Church, uh, St. James's, it reminded me of my Catholic upbringing. It had um, frankincense and myrrh. It had aspirilogism. Asper, asper, asperilog, asperilogism. Hey, Google, what is an aspirilogism? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know how to help with Asper, that. Asper. Here are other things you can try. Hey, Google, what is the thing they use in a church to spray holy water? Aspergillium. Sorry. I hey, don't Google, know how to help with what is an aspergillium? Here's the definition of aspergillum, an implement for sprinkling holy water. Aspergillum. Aspergillium. <laughs> Oh, God, Asper, Aspergillum. I'm such an idiot. Anyway, <clears throat> and all that fun stuff, right? 
I wasn't into Catholic church with acoustic guitar and kumbaya. I was into really old church with, um, and, and the great thing about the Episcopal church versus the Catholic church is Episcopal churches don't care whether or not you believe in God. They are happy to have you as an agnostic, curious, uh, Christ curious, God curious, Episcopal church curious, uh, member of the church. You can even, I had a, an affair with a, with a, uh, with the head of my vestry and she and I had some pillow talk afterwards and uh, we, and she didn't believe in God anymore. But yet she was the the head of the... Hey, Google, what's the name of the head of a vestry? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. What did you name your dog? What is Lil Pump's real name? What is Sting's real name? Never mind. Never mind. Um... And it doesn't matter in the in the in the Episcopal Church, which is so, which means that I get to have the comfort of the fetish of the old church, uh, and have my prayers and have my uh, have my my smoke and mirrors, have my mystery, have my miracles, have my beautiful beautiful Mary, and all those things. And I don't even need to believe that they're the one. God, the one Lord, the one Christ. Um, and that's becoming more and more evident in modern society. Um, the thing that Christians hate so very much is they hate what's called uh, buffet, buffet Christianity, which is you or buffet religion, buffet spirituality, which is you go in there and you like, like Sizzler salad bar, um, or like Golden Corral, you go in there and you make your own plate. You do not accept the plate given to you by, by authority. And now that we have the internet... Oh! <clears throat> I don't even know. Did I? Am I? Um, I don't even know where I'm going. But I was talking... I think I was talking about uh, NPR and The Times and uh, CNN and MSNBC... When uh, nowadays every 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 headline includes includes things like baseless claims without evidence, the 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 powers that be, the authority structures in America, are losing control of this ship completely. People don't believe scientists. They don't believe medical doctors. They don't believe politicians they do believe the politicians you don't want them to believe they don't believe the politicians who are vetted and, uh, and went through the proper channels um no matter how many uh, official sources for you know for uh um fact checks no matter how many official fact checks there are at the post no matter how many fact checks there are online, no matter how often Twitter or Facebook uh, intends to inline those, uh, the, the facts are disputed, please check a reliable source. The more this happens, then uh, the lady doth protest too much. And um, it doesn't matter whether or not what they're saying is true doesn't matter if it's God's truth. It's all hearts and minds. And that'll be the next segment. Hearts and minds versus command and control. I don't know if y'all are following me. I don't understand what I'm talking about myself. So we'll come back after the break. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It's season two, episode three of Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham. Um, what is, you have to, um, hey Google, what's the saying you attract more bees with honey? On the website english.stackexchange.com, they say, 
You catch more flies with honey than vinegar, or sometimes you catch more flies with honey is an English proverb. That is, you're going to get what you want in the proverb flies, but in the any goal with sweetness rather than acidity. Um, thank you. <clears throat> I knew it was you, you get more flies because honestly, I do know that bees are not attracted to honey. Bees produce honey. Bees are attracted to flowers and pollen. Um, they're mostly attracted to flowers that that pop uh, on their their um, uh, on their in their vision, which is different than ours and uh, highlights um, the. Uh, but you know what I'm saying. So the lady doth protest too much, and you uh, attract more flies with honey than vinegar. Um, a spoonful, uh, just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, the medicine go down, the medicine go down. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in the most delightful way. Oh, what happened? Oy vey. So, with those three truisms, um, no longer can you force feed American public. There's just too many alternate uh, belief systems. There's just too many other checks and balances. You can't blame everything on the Russians and have anybody believe you at the end of the day. Once you blame one thing on the Russians and it's soundly debunked, not by the authorities, but by, by you and your friends, once you and your friends call bullshit, right? Okay. So like how many, how many, uh, teen dramas, teen comedies, and dumb TV programs show a a room full of whippersnapper uh, know it all kids who are completely dunking on their stupid stupid school teacher, right? The whippersnappers are like, you don't know anything, Mister Blah Blah Blah, you know, um, dunking on them, uh, putting. Putting whoopee cushions underneath his on, uh, on his chair, uh, putting glue, gluing him places, uh, making him lose his toupee. I mean, humiliating, uh, humiliating the authority figures is a time honored tradition. The only people who show in America have ever shown respect for school teacher are teachers' pets. Now, I dare say. That in the structure of modern America, the teacher's pets are only 20%. Um, and the teacher's pets, oh, good Lord, everybody hates them. Everybody hates everybody. Everybody, by everybody, I mean the majority of people hate the editor of the school paper. They hate the um, the AV club kids. They hate the... The theater kids, they hate the drama kids, they hate the band kids. I mean, ugh, they, the, the, there hasn't been a National Merit Scholar since, I guess, I don't know how cool my buddy Mark Harrison was in school. He had disdain and contempt for everybody who went to school with him because he was, you know, a 150 IQ kind of kid. Um, nobody likes the uh the gifted uh the gifted kids the gifted what is the they have a, a full term for it um hey google what are gifted programs called on the website published.gwinnett.k12.gar.us they say the gifted program is called focus at the elementary school level probe at the middle school level and is referred to as gifted education and quest in high school Interesting. Accelerated programs in gifted education. Very interesting. That That's all Georgia information, so I don't know if that's nationwide. I think they still believe that Jesus rode a, rode a Tyrannosaurus Rex in Georgia. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, you need to win people by hearts and minds. This is, uh, this is... This requires special forces strategy. This requires a uh, hearts and minds war. Hey, Google, what's uh, the theory behind... Hey, Google, what's the theory be behind hearts and minds? According to Wikipedia, 
Winning hearts and minds is a concept occasionally expressed in the resolution of war, insurgency, and other conflicts, in which one side seeks to prevail not by the use of superior force, but by making emotional or intellectual appeals to sway supporters of the other side. Yeah, well, that's opt-in, right? The Montagnards in the uh, the highlands of uh, Vietnam and Laos uh, and Cambodia um, they, you know, had several ways of doing it. They could uh, accept the uh, American um, intervention forces as as allies, and, or they could use them um, for for the the protection and support, and possibly the uh, em emigration immigration ability to to get out of uh out of poverty uh there's so many ways why people might comply with you um sometimes it's not worthy looking a gift horse in the mouth hey google what does the term lift look a gift horse in the mouth mean here's the definition of look a gift horse in the mouth find fault with something that has been received as a gift or favor so, on one hand, if people are doing what you've asked them to do, you shouldn't question that. However, if, you know, for example, an episode or two ago, I did an entire hour on the concept of hypocrisy and saying that the same people who profess um, love of God, um, extreme following of the Ten Commandments, um, and the remission of sin... Hey, Google, what does remission of sin mean? On the website vocabulary.com, they say, end the act of absolving or remitting. Formal redemption is pronounced by a priest in the sacrament of penance. Synonyms, absolution, remission, remittal types, indulgence. The remission by the Pope of the temporal punishment in purgatory that is still due for sins even after absolution. Well, the same person who professes remission of sin amongst his flock might be the same person who bangs hookers, right, and uh, and sniffs coke off of someone's ass, right? There's that there's that separation, that bifurcation. Um, uh, um, what is it? Uh, um, um, Virgin in the kitchen, whore in bed, you know, the virgin whore complex. And I do not mean this to be gender specific. I was a virgin. I was a whore. I'm a virgin again. One day I'll be a whore. Uh, in this world where gender doesn't need to be so specific, I think that both men and women can have a uh, virgin Mary and uh, and uh, and Mary... Um, uh, Mary Magdalene kind of uh, separation, but you don't expect it to be. I mean, uh, that strong. I wonder if I wonder if Fauci uh, gets spankings from a dominatrix. Wouldn't that be great? A uh, little. Hey Google, how tall is Anthony Fauci? According to Wikipedia, Fauci grew up. Hey Catholic, Google, but now how tall is Anthony Fauci? According to Wikipedia, Fauci attended the Jesuit Regis High School in Manhattan's Upper East Side, where he captained the school's basketball team despite standing only five feet seven in tall. You got to be quite a charmer if at five foot seven, and I dare say he's five foot two, um, if you uh, can seduce an entire country to, to willful compliance. Although, like I said, Considering that um, Christmas was uh, the most uh, f the most traveled day since coronavirus began in March, since the lockdowns began, I dare say that nobody nobody's listening to anything. People are saying they're doing it. This is an Eddie Haskell situation. America is going through a deep Eddie Haskell. Hey Google, who is Eddie Haskell? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. 
Edward Clark Haskell is a fictional character on the Leave It to Beaver television situation comedy, which ran on CBS from October 4, 1957 to 1958 and on ABC from 1958 to 1963. He was played by Ken Osmond. So Eddie Haskell was on Leave It to Beaver and he was the uh, charming, uh, lying little kid. He would tell stories, he'd talk stories, he'd lie, he'd lie to people's faces. He was a rapscallion. Hey, Google, what is a rapscallion? Here's the definition of rapscallion. Archaic, humorous, a mischievous person. Damn, I know all the words, but I don't know what they mean. I, I know this language phonetically. Um... And he did lip service. He would he would tell you anything you needed to hear in order so that you would leave him alone to do whatever he wanted to do. Um, America's getting really good at that. We might have always been really good at that. Uh, hey, Google, what's the definition of scofflaw? Here's the definition of scofflaw. Informal. A person who flouts the law, especially by failing to comply with a law that is difficult to enforce effectively. That is, by definition, what's going on now, right? The laws, um, the laws against coronavirus are completely unenforceable. Um, my buddy Keith always used to tell me uh, that the perception of a police officer around every corner the perception of of constant contact, the perception that there was someone always watching you, the perception that school marm had eyes on the back of her head, all of these things create uh, uh, a, a perception of enforcement, a uh, perception of laws and boundaries that are completely unenforceable and that require the good faith of a majority of the population in order to work. Um, if there was a spontaneous and and com comprehensive uh, uh, rebuke of of the power of authority using the uh, using fear and shame as support structures, then everything would completely fall apart and, and nobody would be able to do anything about it, you know? Um, even as my friend Mark jokes about Boston Robotics or whatever they're called and their, uh, their, their near future of, of soldier bots, even I mean, you can't buy enough soldier bots and drones and satellites. They barely can keep up with roving tribes of of uh, of of um, uh, Taliban and uh, and um, uh, Afghani rebels, you can barely keep track of them. You know, you only have a room full of. There's only so many people per war room. This might be different when everything's relinquished to an AI that can, you know, that lives in a, a world of nanoseconds and can respond. But even then, you need to have a chain of command. You need to get authority. You need to get um, a, a writ uh, from a judge. You need to get um, a warrant. You need to do all of these things. And all of these things require the even even stamp even like rubber stamping hey google what does rubber stamping mean here's the definition of rubber stamp approve automatically without proper consideration damn i'm smart but i don't know what i'm even saying but that works um even with rubber stamping kutunk 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 like in the tv show mash you know where um uh, they were always uh, tricking uh, the uh, the officer into signing uh, documents that had nothing to do with you know that were the 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 approval without the person knowing of hijinks down the road even with with uh, black budgets and with uh, discretion uh, discretion based uh, uh, authority and with all kinds of uh, unencumbered 
black ops type of crazy, the future sucks, like we're all doomed kind of uh, uh, authority. There are only so many people who are who have sworn an oath to to uh, to be a baddie. Even if you start off uh, off sourcing to to mercenaries and private security, there's only so many people in two uh, percent or three percent of America who have the training or wherewithal. Or honestly, people are generally good. So finding someone who will be an effective jackbooted thug, who will be uh, tested by war, and who would be willing, gladly, without any reservations and without any associated trauma disorders, to pop caps into people's heads, you know, to uh, to double tap their chest and shoot them in the in the in the forehead, or in the back of the head. Like those are few and far between. They're not as. I mean, even though we have. Hey, Google, how many guns are owned by Americans? According to Wikipedia, the small arms survey stated that U.S. civilians alone account for 393 million of the worldwide total of civilian-held firearms. There are 120.5 firearms for every 100 residents. Anyway, um, I guarantee you that, um, that there are not 393 million people in America, who are willing to put a to put a bullet in your in your brain, um, that's definitely a rarer thing. Otherwise, James Bond wouldn't be so cool. Even uh, John Le Carre books uh, aren't completely. I mean, if you watch movies, uh, there's people shooting each other in dark alleys everywhere, but. It's hard to find people who are willing to um, who are willing to do the evil deeds of of the author of authority figures in order to force compliance on a big level, and we we see how that how, what happens from that, right? Um, you can see what happened to the Soviet Union, which was a a high enforcement country. You can see what happened to um, uh, Eastern Germany, which is a a sorry high authority country. Uh, country. Um, it just doesn't work. We need, people need to not be shamed into thinking if they don't, if they don't do what authority figures say, they're stupid because they don't think they're stupid. And at least half the country thinks you're stupid. And by you, I mean, you authority figures by, and, and, and we also know that, um, that only, 20% of our country is actually, um, you know, um, actually, uh, I don't know. Hey, Google, what percentage of the American public has an advanced degree? 13.1%. Here's a summary from the website census.gov. About 13.1% of U.S. adults have an advanced degree. So I would say that only 13% of all y'all are actually the ruling class. I would say that only 13% of you all... Um, hey, Google, what percentage of Americans have professional degrees? 13.1%. On the website census.gov, they say about 13.1% have a master's, professional degree, or doctorate. Huh. So only 13.1% of you uh, run the rest of the country. Now, that's only a little over 10%. Um, and then you've got uh, people who uh, are liberal and Democrat and so forth. And to, to be honest, you're trying to... Uh, 10% of America, um, and I would say that this is the enlightened 10%, uh, only 10% of Americans are trying to um, ride a bull that is uh, 90% people who don't even have um, a JD, an MD, uh, a master's, even a master's degree. Um, I bet you didn't know that it was only 13.1%, uh, up from 86 did it say? You are over, over, 
completely uh, out of your debt your depth and and the only way you can create a giant paper tiger the only way you can hide a wizard behind the curtain is by uh, is by getting uh, the by getting rid of the internet the internet is going to undermine all of the puppeteering all of this um, all of this uh, this messaging this top down um, while you're fighting top down, which is what mainstream media is, the rest of the country and the rest of the world is fighting bottom up. And um, if you've ever read the book um, uh, 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 Clue Train Manifesto, um, like see, seeks like, and, and there are way more people, hand to God, there are way more people in this country who uh, who watch Tim Pool who who listen to um, Coast to Coast, who listen to Mark Levin, who listen to... Um, uh, um, uh. Hey, Google, who owns InfoWars? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. Anyway, you know the the, the crazy dude with the, uh, with the tinfoil hat. Um, uh... But, you know, it's really going to be hard to continue this forward. There's going to have to be some drastic, uh, something drastic, um, some way to curtail uh, such constant, you know, that's another thing. I'll be right back. Oh, thank you. I think what I meant to even do today, and and we'll talk about this in another episode, is the whole concept of conspiracy theory. Um, uh, Using authority to shame people into believing what they believe is, is, is conspiracy theory, is bunk that was debunked is, is, uh, you know, at, at some point your, your derision of someone gets so insulting that at some point, instead of saying, yes, you're right, you're right. It's just, there's no chemtrails in the sky. Jesus is, uh, and God is the sky daddy. Um, we live in a science-based world. Um, the new, the new priest, forget about my priest. It's now scientists. It's now medical doctors. It's now the holy 13.1%. Um, so mote they be. Uh, and, um, and with this replacement strategy of making people feel like they, uh, they're foolish for believing in their leprechauns or for believing in, in their angels or for believing, um, any in the Bigfoot or space aliens or the ever presence of Jesus Christ, their personal savior in their life. At some point, there's going to be a point of diminishing return where people turn around in on mass and say, fuck you. We didn't agree to this and we're bigger than you. And that, uh, that, that, that American, uh, and very literally that American elephant, the pachyderm, the GOP elephant, that elephant is going to become untethered from the very, very, very weak leak lead that has been uh, keeping it. The American public has been pretty, pretty pacific, pretty passive, pretty, pretty, pretty peaceful. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I I don't include, I don't include Black Lives Matter. I don't include, um, uh, I don't include immigrants. I don't include, these are all minority factions in, in, in the American lumbering oaf. Um, uh, you know, trans people are only 1% of the entire or less. Hey, Google, what percentage of Americans are trans? 0.4%. Here's a summary from the website en.wikipedia.org. 
Studies from several nations have produced a statistical range of 1.2 to 6.8% of the adult population identifying as LGBT. So, only 1.2 to 6.8 or even LGBT. Hey Google, what percent of Americans are uh, are are, are African American? Hey Google, what percentage of uh, Americans are black? Its black population is 13.4. Hey Google, what percentage of Americans are immigrants? 13.7%. On the website PewResearch.org, they say... There were a record 44.8 million immigrants living in the U.S. in 2018, making up 13.7% of the nation's population. So, <clears throat> there, is a, there is a big majority in America who, um, who don't believe anything they're told anymore. Um, the African-American... Uh, Black Lives Matter, they definitely don't believe a lot of things that they're told anymore. They're unwilling to comply. They're, no, they're non-compliant people, which I think is brilliant. They're revolutionary people. They do not want to stand for the, um, uh, for the standard operating precipitation, for the status quo. They're unwilling to accept the status quo. The LGBTQ plus community is unwilling to to stand for the status quo. Um, more and more, the immigrant communities are unwilling to stand for the status quo. I'm hoping more and more homeless communities of homelessness, communities experiencing homelessness, com communities experiencing unhousedness, I don't even know what the phrases are anymore, are unhappy with that. And at the end of the day, I, I think that that uh, people who are uh, experiencing poverty, um, no matter what their color, and the working class, I think that this is all comes down not to race wars, not to, um, uh, but it comes down to class wars. And I believe that um, in many cases, it is uh, the fact that more and more communities that have been docile till now or have been afraid and ashamed. Uh, that fear and uh, uh, shame are are choke chains that you put on yourself. They're they're self. Uh, they're um, they're types of self control. They are, if you will, uh, the ego and super ego controlling a type of id that the internet now is happy to release. Hey Google, what are the id, ego, and superego? According to Wikipedia, the id, ego, and superego are a set of three concepts in psychoanalytic theory describing distinct, interacting agents in the psychic apparatus. The three agents are theoretical constructs that describe the activities and interactions of the mental life of a person. Hey Google, what is the id? According to Wikipedia, the id, ego, and superego are a set of three concepts in psychoanalytic theory. Hey, Google, theory. stop. Uh, we're not getting anywhere from that. Anyway, uh, the id is the base nature of man. The ego is the self-aware nature of man. And the superego is the part of, the, is, the, is the unknown force that balances uh, the, basically, um, the, the superego is the intermediary, um, if you will, that balances the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other. So it's really, in a reductive way, um, the ego and the id are diametrical opposing forces, not necessarily good or bad, but more, um, more base. It is more base. Um, desires, passions, lusts, hungers, appetites, 
and the uh, and and the super ego is the uh, is the uh, if you will the the controller uh, of those things the the moderator uh, if you will um anyway i could talk about this all day and i apparently have this might be the longest podcast ever but uh i just i just want everybody to know that the country doesn't look the way you think it is the country near isn't nearly as sophisticated as as anybody thinks it is. I don't think anybody thinks America is a, a sophisticated country. I think it's proven by our lack of interest in educating anybody. Um, public schools are are are, if you will, uh, uh, prison light, and um, and there's no incentive. There's very little incentive for anybody but. Uh, middle class and upper middle class and rich people to pursue uh, a a a high culture a uh, haute couture that's not true haute couture is is fashion a high culture um, if you will uh, exploration of the world including uh, science music language history literature etc. Um, ethics. I mean, there's so many things that you learn when you go through a liberal education at university level and then go to graduate school and then are surrounded by smart people. And it is a, a feed, a positive feedback loop. Um, otherwise you can end up in a stagnant. Um, and if I have any advice, it's to stop calling people stupid where that where you can where they can hear you i mean i know you can't handle it i can't believe how much contempt you have for people who if they're white like the kind of contempt that one has for a white dude in america who is under the same uh threats and challenges and shames and insecurities but is a white family in white America is so different than the kind of compassion, the public compassion one has for a person of color who's going through the same experience. I understand that they are different things entirely and that there is a entitlement associated with being born with white skin, but it doesn't feel like that when you're in the body. Right when you're in the body, it doesn't feel like that. You still feel I've lost my wife, I've lost my kids, I'm I I have suicidal ideation, which is not how they would say that. Um, I am desperate. I am hungry. I am lost. I feel like my life has no meaning. I don't have uh, I don't have fulfilling work, etc. 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 So um, at the end of that day. Um, you have the same kind of desperation that anybody in that in that in that personal life experience would have desperation uh, uh, devil may care um, and then at that point shame doesn 't matter anymore that security blanket that security guard that 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 security lock those manacles are gone, and then at some point, fear becomes so overwhelming that you basically say, fuck it. Um, and, uh, if I, if I was prepared, I would, I would quote risky business. Um, oh, what is the quote? Let me see if I can find it guys. You'll love this. I'm going to pause and come back with that quote. Hey guys, I'm back. Season 2, Episode 3 of Chris Cast. Here is uh, an excerpt from um, Tom Cruise in Risky Business that you, if you haven't heard it, you should hear it. If you have, this is a nice reminder. No guts, good sir. Yeah. You know, only when it came right down to it, I just wasn't attracted to it. Should never stop you. You seem too big. It could have worked out. I figured I would have gotten into trouble somehow. And sometimes you gotta say, what the fuck? Make your move. 
it's easy for you to say. I mean, you're all set. You're probably going to Harvard. Me, I don't want to make a mistake. Jeopardize my future. Joel, you want to know something? What? Every now and then, say what the fuck. What the fuck gives you freedom? Freedom brings opportunity. Opportunity makes your future. Wow, you're right there. So your folks are going out of town. Tomorrow. You got the place all to yourself. Yeah. What the fuck? If you can't say it, you can't do it. got off the telephone with Bill Rutherford. Apparently. Anyway, that is that. Um, there is one more scene, which is this one, which is awesome. So here's one more scene you can enjoy before we close out this episode. If you have more than ten thousand dollars in the bank and you don't know this, I guarantee you uh, that you're missing out on a fortune. Real estate and the stock market are earning a. T- sorry about that. Joe. Your stats are very respectable. You've done some solid work here, but it's not quite Ivy League now, is it? You know, Bill. There's one thing I've learned in all my years. Sometimes you gotta say, what the fuck? Make your move. I beg your pardon? So, how we doing? Looks like University of Illinois. (laughs) Oh, white people problems, right? Am I right? Couldn't be a, a nicer neighborhood that Tom Cruise and Risky Business lived in. But if you haven't seen that movie, um, very sexy scene on a train. Lots of fun, very funny. I don't know if it's aged very well in terms of politically correct police, but you should check it out. Fun movie. Very uh, interesting. Anyway, I hope I made some sense. This is probably the longest episode I've ever done. I'm going to come back with the going goodbye, goodbye stuff and talk to you soon. Welcome back, Season 2, Episode 3, Chris Abraham. You can reach me in any many sundry ways. First of all, I'd like you to go to your favorite podcasting platform and uh, like me, subscribe to me, give me thumbs up, write a review, write a comment. I think those things are good for the algos. Um, you can reach me at Chris Abraham everywhere. Uh, YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham, Facebook.com slash Chris Abraham, Twitter.com slash Chris Abraham, um, LinkedIn.com slash in slash Chris Abraham, uh, ChrisAbraham.com is my website, Chris-Abraham.com is my Tumblr. Um, my phone number is plus one, which is the U.S. or Canada. Uh, 202 352 5051. 202 is a DC area code. I live in South, sexy South Arlington. 202 352 5051. You can text me. You can uh, WhatsApp me. <clears throat> you can leave your hat on. You can signal me. 
if you call me, I won't answer unless we have a date. If you want a date, you can set one up at C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y, calendly.com, uh, slash Chris Abraham, slash 15. Uh, that'll be a 15-minute get-together on a call. Happy to do it. Um, I'm at Chris on No Agenda Social. I'm at Chris on uh, Girovic. Dot su. Um, my email is chris at abraham dot su. Uh, the reason why I have an su address, which is Soviet Union, which is mostly deprecated, uh, um, but is still being serviced, uh, is because Abraham was the uh, Fata Abraham Hata Zibin Zuna. Um, because Father Abraham had seven sons, and seven sons had Father Abraham. He is uh, the prophet of uh, Christianity, uh, Judaism, and uh, and uh, and in Islam, he is the the uh, the trunk of the tree of God in terms of the uh, Semitic religions. So uh, they're hard to find. And I've always envied people who've had first name at last name dot com. And so the only one I could find was dot SU. And luckily I'm savvy enough to secure one from the Russian Federation. So there's that. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. I do these periodically. Uh, this is season two, episode three. I Each season is 50 episodes, so it's arbitrary uh, in terms of timeline, but, uh, there you go. Thank you for coming. Thank you for staying all the way through the entire episode. And I hope you learned something. Uh, please contact me. Oh, if you want to support the podcast, go to anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham slash support. And I assume you can spend money on me there. Ciao. Take care. Aloha. Mahalo. Tschüss. Auf Wiedersehen. A biento a tout à l'heure. Um, hasta la, hasta la, hasta, hasta, hasta la mañana, hasta mañana, hasta la proxima. There we are. Ciao.